Good afternoon, this is Mr. Brian Back representing the Automotive Training Group and today I want to talk about oxygen storage capacity testing of the catalytic converter. So as we know the catalytic converter has cerium in it that it uses to store and release oxygen and the cerium is the component that the onboard diagnostic system is using to determine the health of the converter. So if it does it, we can too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a scan tool that I got it displayed up on the screen and I'm going to use propane. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add propane. I'm gonna watch my front sensor go rich. My rear sensor is gonna go rich. I'm gonna take away propane. And I wanna watch my front sensor go lean. And I'm gonna count how long it takes for my rear sensor to go lean. And I wanna see more than two seconds. Really, I'd like to see more than 10 seconds. I know if it's less than two seconds, it's bad. If it's between two and seven seconds, eh, it's questionable, depends on manufacturer. If I'm over seven seconds, I'm pretty sure the converter's not my problem. So one of the things I have here on the screen is I have time flying by in frames per second. So I need to know how many frames to the second because frame rate's gonna vary by vehicle. So what I can do is I can pick a point where I wanna start counting. I could use a stopwatch on my cell phone or I can go old school. And I'm gonna go old school because I'm an old guy. So I'm gonna go hit 850 here when it gets to 850. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi. I hit six Mississippis and I went about 30 frames. So I'm about five, sec five frames to the Mississippi or five frames to the second. Keep in mind, I'm not trying to measure milliseconds here. I'm trying to get an idea of the health of my converter. I can certainly tell the difference between 10, between 10 frames, uh, which would be two seconds, and 100 frames, which would be 20 seconds. So this isn't rocket science, guys. Don't make it harder than it has to be. So on this car, I have a front air fuel ratio sensor and a rear O2 sensor. We see right now, my rear O2 sensor is steady at 800 millivolts, which looks awesome. My front sensor is right about 3.3 volts, which is the neutral position for Toyota air fuel ratio sensor. Air fuel ratio sensors, remember, are inverted compared to my oxygen sensor. That means when I go lean, this is gonna go up. When I go rich, it's gonna go down. I've also got my short-term fuel trim and long-term fuel trim up here. And I'm gonna use my fuel trims to help gauge how much propane I put in. So this helps me kind of narrow it down to get a good result. The ideal number is about 20% negative shift in fuel trim. If I'm working a car with speed density, it might not let me do that. This is a mass airflow sensor car, so it should uh, work a lot better. But again, you don't know if it works till you try it. So you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. This is a pretty quick test to do. So I've got my propane rig here with a regulator and an on-off switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to put this in, hold the button down, and slowly crank the, the valve open to bring the AF sensor voltage down rich and make my rear O2 sensor voltage high. I want to watch my fuel trims. When I take it away, I'm going to see my front sensor go high and my rear sensor, I'm going to see how long it takes for it to go low. That's the amount of oxygen storage. So first thing I want to do is pick a spot to put propane in. This is a mass airflow sensor vehicle. So I'm going to go into a spot of my air horn right after my mass airflow sensor, which is where my PCV goes into it for the vent hose. So I pulled this out. Now when I pulled this out, my engine just stopped running. Look what happened. I went lean, my rear sensor went lean, fuel trim just shot up, didn't it? Almost 20%. So I'm gonna give this a minute to adjust before I start doing any testing. Let's let my fuel trim combine. See, long term's taking a little while to decide it wants to do anything. Hey, look, long term just jumped up 10% just jumped up 20% or 18, now we're over 20. Now as this goes up, we should hopefully see short term come back down a little bit. If not, I made too big of a hole. So I can't get it to compensate, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little fitting off, instead of this big hole, let's make a smaller hole and see what it does. Hey, look at that. That made a change, didn't it? So now we move down. My short-term fuel trim is down around 5%. I'm still maxed out on long-term. My rear O2 sector hasn't climbed back up yet. There it goes. Now my converter is properly oxidizing. It's using up all the oxygen. 
I'm gonna get back up to that 700 plus millivolts. I'm now back right around 3.3 volts. So I can do a test here. If this didn't work, I could pop the air cleaner lid open and just do it through the air cleaner lid with it open. But some cars, it's a real pain to get the air cleaner apart, so I thought I'd try this first, and I'll show you both ways. Again, you don't know till you try. So now that I've got fuel trims in control, I want a 20% negative shift. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna move a short-term fuel trim down to around negative 16, negative 20. Long-term fuel trim is probably not gonna move. I want to take away 20% uh, of fuel trim from wherever it is when I start this test. So I want to make sure I have no propane in the residual, push the button down, it's clear. Now I can feed my hose in. I got my hose fit in, I can hold down the valve. And you can see even putting that hose did what? I haven't added anything yet, just putting the hose changed my fuel trims a little bit. So I'm going to add some propane. And boy, look at that, big change. Maxed out my negative fuel trim. I'm gonna let that go here. And we can see front sensor went lean. Rear sensor staying up there nice. It's still not dropping, is it? I'm back to my 3.3 volts here. I'm back to adapting for everything properly. About 2.3 on my short-term fuel trim and my rear sensor never dropped. So let's take a look at this again. So I'm gonna add some propane. We said my front sensor reads rich. Boy, it went way down this time. Right side on my rear sensor went high. I'm gonna let go. Front sensor went high and my rear sensor drop. So there you go. If you notice, I got a much shorter time. So let me move this back a little bit. I got a lot less time, but I moved a lot more fuel trim. So if I move too much fuel trim like I did here, it's going to, the uh, adjustment's going to be huge when I stop adding the propane. It'll shorten my time. But even here, I've got, here's 2750, so about 2747, and I've dropped over here at what, about 72 or so, so 47 to 72, that's still what, 25 frames of data. We agreed that five frames to the second, that's five seconds, so even over propaning this thing. And you saw how much this went down to zero on an AF sector for Toyota, which is almost impossible to get to. I mean, I really flooded this thing and I still got a passing result. Toyota specification is two to 20 seconds. Even with adding too much propane, I got a good result. You saw the first one when I added the correct amount of propane, I never even got the rear sensor to drop. So although we're gonna get some different test results, no matter what, I can prove there's something between these two sensors this converter's working. That's why you want to use the fuel trim and you really want to look at that. Look what I did with fuel trim here. We're at negative 20 plus negative 14. I'm in negative 35% fuel trim. That's way more than the 20% we're talking about. We know before I started messing with this thing, we were within a couple percent of zero on my fuel trim net. And so you can see how much I pulled this thing down. I really over propane it. I still got a passing number. Don't be afraid of this test. Just like anything, the more you do it, the better you get at it, the more comfortable you get at it. But when you look at the price of converters, the price of misdiagnosis, you can see where this is really important. I'm also going to show you on a car we had that we did this test on, and it did fail, but we went and checked for an exhaust leak, and we found an exhaust leak. And the big problem with exhaust leaks is that they pull air in, not that the exhaust is coming out. And I got a short video I'm going to show you on that on where we proved that the converter was working because we were able to put a rubber hose over the hole on the exhaust and watch the rear O2 sensor rise on a little Toyota. So let's take a look at that.